So we got a bunch of fan questions for you. Uh, and, you know, they want to hear directly from you. So I'm going to ask a bunch of questions, uh, kind of going into a bunch of different topics. I broke them down for you so, you know, you can flow nicely. Uh, yeah. So let's let's get on with it. Absolutely. All right. Cool. So, Paul, uh, Angelica Ronk, uh, Taransu, Matthew Gilbert, and Rick Walters all want to know, what does Venture X mean to you? Um, it's a very exciting musical concept that I'm on tour with right now. And uh, it kind of like, you know, it allows me to venture beyond, uh, let's say, the normal expectations of my audience. And the destination is somewhat unknown. That's what the X stands for. And, um, you know, the, the few shows on tour that I've played so far, every single one was somewhat different because it's kind of, it, it is that flow, it is that interaction with the audience that sort of defines it. And um, on sort of like, you know, in regards of the music that you might expect, it is a bit more on the sort of like, you know, techier side in a way. It has a different punch to it. It is by no means boring. People still jump up and down like, like crazy, which excites me because that's what I do. That's my way of dancing. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's very powerful, very energetic. And, uh, to me, it allows me, as I said, it allows me to branch out into different things that I normally would not necessarily explore on a normal Paul Van Dyke set. So from the music standpoint, like uh, Paul Van Dyke, uh, classic sound, how would you say, what would you say is the difference between what some may consider uh, the classic PVD sound and Venture X and Vandit alternative? Um, I think it's like, it's the tension between going back to the roots where electronic music and techno came from, plus a very futuristic approach to it. I really believe that this is like, you know, the way how sort of like music is going to develop into it has as I said, it has that drive, it has that punch, it has that sort of energetic dynamic to it. And as well, it has like, you know, intense musical moments as well. But it's not just about kind of like lulling yourself into some like spheric sort of thing. It is about that drive. It is about getting that kick, that kick in your butt in, at the night that kind of like, you know, keeps you going. So Kevin Pajak has asked, uh, what are your goals for the new label Vandit Alternative and how does Venture X reflect that? Well, Vandit Alternative obviously is, it is an alternative. It is kind of like somewhat different, a different outlet to the music that uh, Vandit itself stands for, what people can expect from it. And uh, there's like so much great music out there from like phenomenal artists like, you know, Fuenka and, and Weekend Heroes and, and, and many more that are sort of also kind of collaborated with in the past um, that didn't really fit the, the expectation that people have. And they say, oh, that's a new vendor record. So I thought it might make a lot of sense to kind of create something that's a bit of a different outlet. Vendit in itself stands for quality electronic music. So therefore, it was really important for me to keep Vendit in it, but make sure people understand it is somewhat different. And before we kind of like come up with something like crazy, I just thought, you know, it's an alternative. It's kind of like a different approach on the same high quality standards that we have to this music. And if you look at it last week, it's like three out of the progressive tracks uh, um, or yeah, three out of the progressive charts at Beatport were from Vendit Alternatives. So people seem to really enjoy the music that's being released there. And also, um, you know, I believe like, you know, for the whole team that's behind it, we're on the right path here. And obviously that's also music that is being reflected on the Venture X tour. Now, not everything that is released on Vendit Alternative will find its way into the Venture X musical programming. Because it also one of the very special things about what I do there is I'm not really playing like the full tracks. It's just really all this like um, 
I don't know, deconstructed in a way and then put together in a different way. This is why maybe, you know, a track you hear and that's kind of, let's say, fluffy on your iPhone when you listen to it, it comes across extremely banging because I had another bass line, another drum set behind it. And it really kicks and it really rocks. And uh, this is something that sort of like really excites me. And as I said, it's like the last few tour dates actually have been really, really exciting and uh, and energetic. So Amza Alina is asking, you know, it's a, it has only been a few shows, but from what you've experienced so far, um, you know, what's the reaction to, to Venture X been? Um, well, so far, it's very, very positive, I have to say. It's like, you know, people uh, uh, enjoy the, the somewhat unexpected approach. Um, and also, look, I cannot even tell you where it's going at what point. You know, I would say the last show uh, in Detroit was probably much harder from the sound structure than, let's say, in New York a week before. That's simply from the feel and the vibe and the surroundings and the influences of the night itself. And it, it every individual evening becomes a very unique experience. It's like it's, it's just that one moment that actually is created with all of us together in the room. And that... Um, yeah, that makes it really exciting. It's it's quite complex what I'm doing there with like all the sequencing and and all the things. I also something that's really exciting for me is um, the company Roland, the synthesizer company, came up with something called the Boutique Series. So what they did is actually they taking the old amazing keyboards like the JD800, the Juno, and so on, and they make them into a kind of like like a small unit with a keyboard section for it, which means I can have the whole spectrum of my favorite synthesizers live with me. And uh, so it's like, it's it's also, it's a growing like technical aspect of the whole thing. And, um, you know, the other day when I was like listening to some of those classic sounds of the JD-800, I had goosebumps and tears in my eyes. And all that is kind of like filtered in and, and and put into the experience of Venture X when I play live. Great. Um, so Ben Blankenhorn uh, is asking, uh, are we going to see some hard and deep PVD and Vandit remixes of, of any off the record and Venture X uh, tracks? Um, well, the thing is, um, I don't know if you will see them in regards of being released as such, but obviously... Whenever I play live, even if I do a Paul Van Dyke show or when I play at Shine, um, everything I do is pretty much a live setup. So it allows me to kind of put, uh, let's say, the same track in a totally different format so it fits much better to actually the surrounding I play in. And uh, so, um, yeah, there will be versions of tracks that you know that fit much better into the whole soundscape of Venture X as much as something that sort of, let's say, grew out of Venture X into a proper, um, you know, 130 BPM uh, scenario uh, for Shine, as an example. But, you know, this is all like work in progress in a way. So this is this is something where, you know, the X stands for Destination Unknown. And the Venture is pretty much, it's an adventure. It's a musical sort of like idea. And for an adventure as well, you have to be as prepared as you can be. But how the expedition is going to be, you never know beforehand. And this is the excitement that that I feel about Venture X and everything that's coming this year. Uh, speaking of things that are coming, um, Doug Armstrong and, and Heinrich Faust uh, had a question with regards to the trilogy album. Uh, and they were curious uh, about your plans. Well, obviously, it's like, you know, this is like the great thing about a sort of you know, being in the in the soundscape of electronic music, it enables me as an artist to be creative. But that sometimes also makes things somewhat crazy. <laughs> so in a way, obviously, off the record was something that was already leading towards the sound of uh, what Future X is and uh, also what Vended Alternative is. And in a way, from that production phase, the idea of creating a touring concept for that particular sound, this is where it sort of came from. 
And so right now, this is like something that I also focus on at the same time. There's a lot of music that I really, really enjoy and already also sort of started playing out that is on the 138 BPM sort of like element, more kind of like the festival kind of sound that you know me for. And that will be on for the record and all that accumulated together will will be released towards the end of the year and it's just going to be called the record because at the end of the day that's what it is it's kind of an accumulation of my creative mu musical ideas and all those different aspects and angles and all coming together on on that release and that will be towards the end of the year and of course and there will be a constant sort of string of releases uh, towards then. So it's not that anyone who is waiting, you don't have to wait like for too long. There are some amazing releases lined up with some phenomenal collaborations. I'm, I'm really, really excited about. Great. Um, so we did have some questions uh, on the technical side. Uh, specifically. So uh, one, Aaron uh, Neckert is asking, which plugin do you use for your filter delays? For well, my filter delays, um, well, the thing is, I'm not really using a filter delay on its own. What I really like is uh, the old uh, vintage ping pong delay that Ableton provides. And for a filter, I use the Zonalkis filter setting. Um, it's kind of, uh, it's a plugin that sort of like offers, I believe, six different forms of filters and you can kind of adjust them to any sort of specification you would like. And that's the combination of um, delay and filter. So it's not per se a filter delay because I like to keep the freedom of actually filtering it individually, whatever delay there might be coming from. Got it. Okay. Uh, Blank Stare has a question with regards to, uh, you know, production and future events. Are you going to be using or uh, adding any new hardware or software to fit your signature PVD sound? Any, any new gear that, that you're going to be adding uh, that may have been coming out, that's been coming out uh, recently? Well, I mentioned the boutique series of Roland and, you know, it... it what they've done there, I have to say, it's really phenomenal. They really managed to kind of keep the unique feel that actually is the base, the foundation of any electronic music. Because these machines were the foundation, regardless of if you enjoy dubstep, bass, normal pop EDM or trance or techno, that's the foundation. So they managed to keep that a regional sound, plus made it very, very modern, very sort of future directed with like all the abilities that like modern technology allows you to have. And I have these machines on stage with me and in, in involved in what I present. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we, we also have a bunch of uh, questions about uh, some of the other live concepts that you've done through the years. Um, so I'm going to ask a few uh uh, a few about that now as well. So uh, 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 Alina Jokinen uh, says that she absolutely uh, loved your annual We Are One Festival in Berlin. Would you consider bringing it back? Well, right now, not necessarily. What we're doing right now is we uh, we doing it's we doing it. I believe it's like the third time now in a row. We're doing kind of like it's a big sort of op open air space in Berlin. Uh, where we basically is like doing a Paul Van Dyke show. So I'm playing there for four hours, which enables me to kind of like go from a little bit more fluffy sounds to straightforward banging towards the end of the night. And uh, so that's something that's like almost established as something that we're probably going to do for a few more years, I believe. And um, it very much has the feel of We Are One to it. So it's like We Are One... Um, as a brand in itself, I don't, I don't think we're gonna actually, like, you know, pursue any further. Okay. Um, Steve Watson uh, says that your Sunday sessions occurred at a, a time of need, uh, and he asks, can you hold an annual Sunday sessions for fans to look forward to? Um, that's a very interesting idea to kind of like, you know, just to sort of let's say celebrate the, the togetherness that our music provides. 
at the same time, you know, it's like in the question, it, it was already involved. It was at the time of needs. It was at the time when we were all at, at all at home. Uh, we all didn't really know what's going on. It's like we were all insecure about the situation. And I think it was very important to kind of bring people from all over the world through the music together in those two hours and, and, and not feel alone. So now I would just like, far more i would go for like encouraging you to kind of go out meet your friends and really interact properly with humans and not just on the screen but the general idea of kind of maybe making an annual sunday session where we all kind of like link together and and hang out for some time in the in the digital world um, that's uh, it's an interesting thought okay um Sean Murphy is asking, will you do a Vonic Sessions live stream for us? Um, well, the thing is with the Vonic Sessions live stream, it's somewhat difficult because it, it is obviously um, a radio show as much as it is an on-demand social media streaming program if you want to so it's kind of like difficult to kind of scre stream it at one point because it's being broadcasted in like i believe it's 52 or 53 countries in the world and uh, just time zone wise it would not necessarily make sense so for that uh, i keep the idea of a special sunday session like you know every once in a while uh in in mind uh, which is far more interactive as well because I'm not quite sure. It's like, you know, me, one of the reasons why Vonic Sessions for me or or the importance in Vonic Sessions is that I play music that I believe has an importance and people should hear that kind of music. So at the end of the day, I would be sitting there playing that music and you would watch me listening to the music. I don't know if that's so interesting. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Um, well, o Omar Castellanos is asking, will there be a new song for Shine Ibiza in 2023? There will absolutely be Shine Ibiza uh, in 2023. We're also working on an anthem to sort of emphasize kind of like, you know, that that feel, that positive lifestyle that sort of um, is related to, to, to Shine and to Ibiza. And uh, I can't wait. And also... Uh, you know, doing Ben Shakes is one thing. Shine is like, it, it's another thing. But what it all has in common, it has the same passion, drive and love and feel for electronic music. And um, and there will be for sure, there will be Shine. And uh, we also, um, you know, like we did last year and the years before, taking Shine kind of like out of um, the, the, let's say, the homeland Ibiza, you know, it's like, you know, we've done Shine Abyss from like Dubai, like, you know, Tomorrowland in Belgium and 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 Printworks in London and many other places. And we're going to continue to do that, too, because this is like um, a very important gathering, I believe, as well. It's kind of really developed into something that is there for all of us who love trans music. It is there to come together and enjoy. And that's what we do in regards to Shine. Okay. So we got a bunch of miscellaneous questions for you about a lot of different topics. Um, uh, one in particular, uh, uh, Monique Rinsberger is asking, uh, how do you go about finding new tunes that you play in your sets? You, did you, do you go to different labels? Uh, do you go down the rabbit hole, rabbit hole of Spotify? Um, what, what's sort of your process for discovering new music? Um, well, I have a phenomenal team of like a and R's, obviously, for vended alternatives as well as for vended records. And they also provide me with a lot of like, let's say, musical input, you know, because of the touring and everything else I'm doing, it would be really difficult for me to just kind of like basically sneak around into the vast universe of everything that's out there so it is i have to say somewhat channeled that sort of like receives me but they are still like a few thousand tracks a week so <laughs> it's uh it's it's still a very intense uh uh process and um i also kind of like listen with like let's say different hats in a way to, to the music you know it's like you know is this something that i'm playing for a venture x show and that doesn't necessarily fit 
you know, a Van Shakes, but it's really good for vended alternative. It still has that importance, but it's not fitting my straight lined idea of what I want to present at Venture X and the same goes with other concepts um, but uh, I'm listening to a lot of music and a lot of new music and of course there are like you know certain names uh, you know when I don't know when Fu Anchor pops up I definitely give it a click because it's just you know they've proven like so amazing over the years and um same goes with weekend heroes with uh everything that chris becker is doing is amazing and many 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 more okay um to that greg pitts is asking do you ever bust out the old tracks that were staples of your sets things like binary finery 1998 three drives on a vinyl any of that kind of stuff um well is, is sometimes. I mean, it's like not so much binary finery. I I have to say I don't know. It didn't, didn't pop up so often. Um, but you know, I, I people always like you know. I always see like you know. I see this on social media. People always request, "Can you play Time of Our Lives? Can you play for an angel? Can you play that?" And somehow, I feel um, if I wouldn't kind of play at least a version of it. Uh, people would like not be happy with with the performance. And I do understand this. If I go to a Depeche Mode concert and they do not play Enjoy the Silence, it doesn't matter how good they were. I'm missing out on Enjoy the Silence. Whenever I see them, I want to hear that track. And I could imagine that this is the same for people that come to mind shows. Right, right. Um all right. Well, Katrina Devine is asking, what would you do if you stopped playing music? So if you weren't making music, what what else would you be doing? Hobby uh, or something else? Well, I, I have hobbies. That's uh, that's not the, not the question. So I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be bored, but I would miss something terribly. Because, you know, in a way, making music to me is like communicating in a different language. That That's what I do. And if somebody would say, you can't make music anymore, it's like shutting me up. And um, even if nobody wants to listen to my music anymore, I still will make music. And uh, that that is something that's just like part of who I am. It's like, you know, something that that drives me since I was very little. I mean, I was like 12 years old when I realized music is something very, very special. It's like somehow different. Was different music. It's like, you know, I started to learn how to play the guitar. By the way, my old guitar is still right here. Just, just kind of like, oops. this is my super duper old guitar wow. that I kind of learned to play the guitar with. It's still with me, uh, you know, throughout all the years. Oops. And moving around a lot. It never left. So, Music has always been a really vital part of my life. It's like, despite the fact I was never really good at playing the guitar, so don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no Paul Van Dyke acoustic guitar sets uh, coming up anytime mm, soon. No, I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I protect you from that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so Faina from Oz wants to know what was the first concert you ever attended? The very first concert. I ever intended was the stereo MCs actually. It was uh, it was within East like the East German times, so it was in East Berlin, and they were invited um, for whatever reason to kind of uh, play in East Berlin. And obviously, it's like you know everywhere was like Secret Service and kind of like the socialists and communists and everywhere. And then there were a few people who actually knew where they were including friends of mine and myself. And obviously it's like, you know, people sort of really embraced that concert. And I remember that at some point there was, you know, some some ruffle going on between people from the Stasi, that was the name of the East German Secret Service and some fans. And uh, then the guys start playing, say, hey, stop that shit. This is our audience. We're here to celebrate life. We celebrate everything positive. And uh, and and so they kind of like you know stood stood up for us as their audience, and then they will ever you know have that importance to me. And uh, so yeah, that that was my actually very first concert, and I think I was fifteen or sixteen. Wow, that's a good story. 
Holy cow. Um, okay, so uh, <laughs> Kook Van Joo is asking, uh, is it true that you fly around the world twice uh, uh, in distance each year? And if so, what do you do in all of those boring, endless hours on the plane? Um, well, I'm not necessarily counting the miles that I'm kind of going around the globe, but there's a lot of flying involved. Um, and, uh, well, it's like most of the time, it, it really depends on in which direction I'm flying. If, if it makes more sense to stay awake, then I work. If it makes sense to get some rest and sleep, then I try and sleep. It's like it's it's either or really. At the end of the day, it is indeed really boring time. So you have to do something that, uh, you know, is not boring. Right. Um, okay. So um, a lot of fans actually ask questions about you coming to play in their city. So in lieu of asking you 10 questions, uh, will you play here? Will you play there? Will you play there? Um, if fans want to know where you're going to be touring, what's the best way to find that information? Well, I, I guess on social media. So just kind of like, you know, figure it out. And if I have not been anyhow around your favorite place or club, just go to your club owner and tell them that you want to see me. And then they reach out to the agents and then we try and make it possible. Okay. And then uh, your website as well. It's, uh, what is that? Yeah, of course. I, I, in a way, I still class like my website as show, social media too. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and then I got one final question. Uh, a fun question. Uh, Trance in my world is asking, "How is the dog doing?" Oh, she's lovely. She's uh, very emotional right now. So she has like, you know, the time of the year. So she's very cuddly and very sweet and uh, absolutely phenomenal and um, definitely puts a smile on our face every every day. Okay, great. Uh, any last thing you want to say to the fans before we um, sign off? Yes, actually, I want to. I want to say, um, well, first of all, thank you. Then thanks to everyone who sort of submitted a question, everyone who's watching, and also how grateful I am that I'm actually here because it was seven years ago that I almost died. And I'm, I'm very, very thankful for all the support then and also in the last seven years. And, um, well, yeah. Thank you. You 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 find me in the greatest gratitude towards you all. And all I can do is kind of put all my passion and love that I have for music into music and uh, and bring it over and across to you. And hopefully you'll find time and interest to uh, to come out to see me playing either Venture X or at Shine or just the normal Poverty Night shows. Like either way, it's like I can promise you I will always give the hundred percent that are necessary to bring music, electronic music across in the way it should be. All right. Great. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thank you very much.